Oh shit, I have some bad news coming up. I have some bad news coming up. Like, I saw this draft. I'm like, yeah, pretty chill. And then they locked this creatures. This guy said 44 minute queue. Don't get main roll sad times. I mean, let's play Riven. I know people hate this matchup, so I just want to show you the best way to approach this matchup, I guess. Um, if the Alawi is very good, I've played against one very good Alawi main on the server. The matchup will be very hard, but if the if the guy is not too well or too good, the matchup is kind of easy. Every move you made, I was watching you. As it has become my mission to learn how League of Legends truly works and share this information with everyone, following my fundamental laning course, I now present to you the mid to late game tempo course. This is my newest course and it goes over everything that you need to know about the mid to late game, such as team fighting, split pushing, and how to have high CS and many more topics. Having both the fundamental and the mid to late game tempo course will give you all the information that you need to perform the best at any stage of the game and reach your dream rank. This course will be 20% off for my whole content trip to Korea from late July to the end of August, only on my site at loisinl.com. All right, chat, let's uh, rely on the fundamentals, yeah? Let's rely on some fundamentals here. Even though I'm a jungle main, I love watching your videos because of the mindset you always present. The knowledge I've gained about top lane was actually helped me with ganks. Yo, exactly, bro. Good shit, I love to hear that, bro. Salute to the jungle main. That's why I always think fundamentals are applicable for everybody because if you, as a jungle main, watch me, you learn how to gank, at least for top lane, but honestly, you can apply most of the knowledge to every role. And if you're a support man, you also learn from it because you know when to roam to certain lanes. He's stacking passive. Can I get some money? We're rich, chat. We are rich. Don't sweep her. If you sweep, you're cheating and ghosting. Why is she mad? You have exhaust, piggy. Well, I've ignited. Well, anyways, moving on. She wants to queue this, but yeah, I can't stop her. I feel like I'm doing a really good job here lasting at the latest frame, so she loses maximum. I missed one there. That's a cast, so I don't mind it. Oh, I didn't see her get level 3. The reason why I took 0 damage is because she had 0 tentacles nearby. I'm gonna do a fundamental reset here, chat. Chat, try to think what I would do in my shoes right now. Try to think what you would do in my shoes right now. If this was your guess, you are correct. And now I get tempo reset over her. Why do I get a tempo reset over her? Because she's still catching this wave and I'm already recalling. This is the next wave I'm supposed to play on, but I'll already be back. And it allows us to recall. Or stay. But then I'll be back and I get a freeze. She, she's just recalling right now. But look, she's just went base. I am already walking back chat. So she will lose all the XP here. But us, for me, they will always get you ahead chat. 100 out of 100 games. Or even in the worst scenarios. Learn them chat. Fundamentals. So we still get. How is she back already? Am I in a simulation? How is she back already? Unironically. She can't defend her turret now. She has to recall. You wanna stay? Alright. She can't defend her turret now either. Just recall, bro. I'm gonna cancel Alawi's base. I wanna cancel her base first. So she'll lose full next wave too. There we go, chat. Now she loses full next wave too. Fundamentals! She lost two full waves. Look at the farm, chat. Look at the farm. Look at the farm. What are we thinking? Oh, what are we thinking, huh? That whole section where I just traded, not to kill her, but actually to make her recall, and permanently jungled, juggled with her recall. That's what lost her so much there, chat. You have a full course on every fundamental, but you can also just watch my YouTube videos. I don't know when she gets six, though. I need this short trade so I can kill her at my level 7 with my ignite. I just need her to have no bone plating and be a little bit lower HP. And I can one shot her. Elawi matchup chat. Elawi matchup. Elawi matchup. It's like if you have fun. <laughs> anyways, anyways, anyways. Right now she has old advantage, so I don't have the biggest will to fight her right now. So, oh, it's 4 turn HP, hasn't been farmed once yet, so I can just one-shot this. The reason I can take this is because the wave in top lane is pushing towards me at the moment currently anyway, so. She's slow pushing, it's okay. My jungler is both sides. Why did all the brodies walk there? I mean, if I'm Elise, I'm gonna walk to mid right now, so. We just chill here. To be honest, you know what I should do, chat? I should just get my Hydra. I want to teach you a lesson here, chat, okay? Listen, listening. Any listeners? Listen. Right now, in this point in the game, even though I only have one solo kill, I am extremely far ahead in CS and in plates. Illawi can never get back in terms of resources 
close towards me anymore. The only way Elawi gets back in this game is if I make mistakes. However, I already have Hydra and she only has these items, right? So what I want you guys to do right now is pay very close attention to how I make my decisions to expand my lead. I don't have to kill Elawi to expand my lead. I need to play for plates, proxy, jungle camps, roams. That's what I want to do. I don't need to kill Elawi. I can keep Elawi in lane for the rest of this game and just perma expand my lead anyways. She recalled, perfect. Elise has a Herald, so I also want to try and avoid that. So there we go, we got one plate. Boom, that's 175 gold. I'm not sure where Elise is at right now. I'll do as much damage as I can on this. This is respawning. Goodbye. Elise could be here. I was ready for it. They're losing full waves. This is okay. I was- I didn't see Elise in the bot gank, so that's why I was ready for the Elise E. I was mentally ready. I said, once I see the, th the th thing flying, I have to press flash. So yeah. We did kill Pike there. And this is okay. Eli missed the full wave. I got a plate. I did lose both my stuns, but it's okay. I completely ruined Elise's tempo there too. Then my strong side dies anyways. Sorks. Now I have CDR boots, so I'm gonna be even faster around on the map. She used exhaust. Okay, Elise's bot. See, I care very little about this Alawi. Proxy into Rome chat. Hey, Alawi, just only catches the wave. Yeah, you just go top. Just go top for one wave. I could get some plates here. Akali's recalling, so I can get two plates here probably. Understanding Akali tempo here, I can get two plates here. See, guys, I'm still expanding my lead. I'm still getting way more resources than this Alawi is. Am I killing Alawi? No. Do I need Alawi kills? No. Boom. Got two extra plates. Are you guys learning? Are you guys making notes? I hope you guys are. Boom. Now I go top, I think my Silas away, Silas can go mid, and now, of course, this is extremely well done by my team, and now I get a full turret. Look at the farm chat, look at the farm. That's why I only need one solo kill. This is what challenger players will do to you. If they get ahead, even the slightest lead, you will never get back in the game anymore. Why? Because they will just completely run away with every resource on the map. And now we're double sales to the Elawi. Now I've put temp on top wave, right? As I push out this wave. So now I have a tempo timer to, ro to roam into bot, which I'll definitely make use of. So let's see if we can win the game here. Enemy win condition right now is probably their bot lane. So if we kill their bot lane, then they have no win condition left. All these guys are fighting here. I'm going to ping for dragon. And instead, I'm going to use this tempo to play for the mid wave and the turret. I don't have to kill them. They're recalling. And then I can play into Herald either afterwards too. See, I'm playing for neutrals, farms, things that are consistent. I'm not even getting kills. I don't need kills chat. My kills will come to me. Just wait. My kills will come to me. And this is what I love the most. When I can play for neutrals and things that are consistent. Every game, go, go for my turret, go for my turret, see what happens. I have mythic in base. This guy should be dead. Push him into me, very nice. Oh. My Q ran out because of that. Plus 69. I don't need kills. Plus 600 for tier 2 turrets, always the best feeling. Okay, some mechanics, sometimes I need my mechanics, sometimes I need my mechanics chat. GG, I can play. Okay, but now I want you to take a close look at something, chat. Look at the farm. Look at my items. Look at my items compared to anybody else in the game. How many kills did I have this game, chat? Two. How many solo kills? One. I almost have three items. Here's one item. Zero items. Zero items. Okay, one and a half. This guy's fat, but... You see? That's what macro can do for you, chat. And like I said, this is something that is consistent. You can do this every game when you are ahead. Was I ever at risk? Of losing my lead chat. Was I ever at risk of losing my lead? No. Why? Because I'm not playing for stupid kills. I'm not going for stupid... I mean, I may have just died here. But I got the tier 2 it, right? I barely go for... I, I play very risk-averse when I'm ahead. And when I go for this risk-averse playstyle whilst, whilst I'm ahead, how does enemy team ever catch back up to me? How does this Alawi ever gain this is like close to similar resources as I do? This ult. I tried to bait out this ult. My entire team is both sides. They could be looking for me. So I am being chilling and I'm just gonna push out this wave and relax. It's relaxing time. It's spa time in top lane. 
spot time. Now I also want to get some kills. To showcase you guys, you don't need kills in lane, but you'll get your kills later. I mean, my team is also winning at the moment, so that is also, of course, why the game is easier to play, but... Yeah. The reason why I go Eclipse second in this game is because I don't need Cleaver, because look how weak the Elawi is. I don't need Cleaver to kill him. Nobody else is building armor, it's only Elawi. So that's why I went Eclipse, so I still have some armor penetration, but I don't need any... any any extra armor penetration besides from the Eclipse because I'm already so far ahead. I will still always have more than enough damage to kill this guy. Why not dust? Because I still want some armor pen. Why is nobody fighting me though? Or did they just... I want kills! So, it's a YouTuber. I explained so many good things this game. I was able to showcase... Ah. Please die. Thank you. Fundamentals. Macro. Tempo. G. G. My team was playing well. I, I, I did say that. But you know what the funny part is, Chet? You know what the funny part is? So look at this head. Silas, 9 kills. My jungler, 4 kills. Look at the gold. 9k gold, 9k gold. I am 11. Okay, 9.7. But I'm still almost 2k gold up on this guy. I'm 2k gold up on this guy. Even though they have 9 kills and I have 3. And I was double Elawi's gold. I killed this guy once and I doubled his gold. I have one solo kill on Elawi and I doubled his gold. You guys can do a lot of this too. Now, it's not easy. It's not like, oh, I can do this instantly now too. You gotta practice it. But the more you practice it and the more you ingrain these mindsets, and with mindsets, I mean, if you are already ahead, stop being a little undisciplined piggy, play risk averse and expand your lead without any risk. Remember when I walked into lane with my Hydra and I told you guys, I will, I don't need to kill this Alawi anymore. I just only need to expand my lead through proxy into Rome, proxy into jungle camps, proxy into anything or just push up my wave go roam anything anything that i can do to get jungle camps to gain tempo to make sure i always expand my lead right so a different way to explain this is if i'm already a little bit ahead right my gold is here allow his gold is here as long as i never die i will always stay ahead and because i'm more ahead i will also have like my my gold increases like this and his gold increases like this right so i will always expand my lead as well then on top of that, all I have to do is to make sure I gain more resources than the Alawi. What are resources on the map? If he gets a wave and I get a wave, we gain equal resources, right? And this is what I call the cinema experience. If you're ahead and all you do is push in the wave, stare at your opponent undisturbed like this, you know, and then just, just scratch your chin or whatever and do nothing, you're not expanding your lead. So what you want to do is try and avoid trading equal resources and get into a position where you can expand your lead without even having to make kills. So how do you do this? You can get resources from jungle camps, uh, proxy right to gain tempo and to roam so you get enemy jungle camps you can look for roam timers invade enemy jungle roam timers roam mid heralds plates all these other types of resources that you can get as long as you avoid training equal resources you will always expand your lead how does this apply on champions that outskill riven um if, if i was playing against the fiora here right i would still if, if i'm expanding my lead without her ever getting more resources than i am Right? I mean, maybe it would just be, you know what, since we're in queue anyways, let, let's just review this game and I'll showcase you guys how I utilize tempo and this, this concept to always expand my lead without giving my opponents any chance because all my opponent can do is collect waves. So let's look at this from my perspective and let's also take a look at it from Elawi's perspective. Okay, so here, this is an interesting part as well. See right here, I'm 1.5k gold up already. So here I've absolutely smurfed my lane uh, fundamentally completely destroyed this guy, got the plates, got the solo kill, we're super happy. Now, when walking back into lane, one of the biggest things that I want to explain to you guys here instantly as well, is in, in order to expand your lead with the highest tempo, you always want to play towards item spike. So right now, I'm 500 gold away from my Hydra. My biggest goal right here is to try and recall ASAP, get my Hydra, get back on the map, because three components are not that strong. If I finish my Hydra, I'm twice as strong as a champion. This doesn't only apply to Riven, this applies to so many champions, right? For example, if you're Aurelia, you want to spike as fast to your Blade of the Rune King. If you're Jax, Camille, you want to spike as fast to your... Um, to your Divine Sunderer, if you play like Fiora or whatever, you want to spike as fast towards your Gore Drinker or whatever you're building, you get the point you want to work towards your spikes. That's first lesson. So here, when coming back to a lane, even though I have a massive lead on this Alawi right now, I don't necessarily need to look for kills right now, as if I finish my item, right? If I just push in the wave and get my item, I'll be twice as strong as him anyway. So now, I'm slow pushing this wave, waiting for this wave to come, and then believe I just hard push the wave right here, and I'll be looking to a recall. Exactly what I do. So now, when walking back into lane, let's take a look right here. I am still 1.5k gold ahead. So this is what I mean. It, right now, at this point in the game, whilst I was back to, uh, walking back into lane, I told you guys, I never need to kill this Alawi anymore. I just need to gradually expand my lead 
without giving the Alawi the opportunity to catch back up, right? So we're right now 1.5k gold up on the Alawi. She can never reach like equal resources uh, close to me as long as I never die, right? If I die, she kills me and she gets played. That's how she could get back up, for example, in terms of resources. But if I never give her that opportunity, then how can she actually get back into this game? And this is also the prime reason why I never teach people on how to play from behind, because if you are behind, you're literally left to the mercy of your opponent. Now, a changer player, right? All he needs is these kind of positions. 1.5k gold lead, I will completely take over the game. So let's take a look at how we do this. Welcome back to lane here. First things first, Elawi, I'm just gonna harpish this wave. Uh, I see there's no camps here, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know where Elise is at. Let's also take a look from, from our perspective. So it, it's more clear for you guys as well. Okay, this is our perspective, right? Okay, so I, uh, I'm scouting you to see if, it's worth it. if there's an Elise. Elawi recalled perfectly. What am I gonna do? Instantly harpish this wave because Elawi's in base. I'm not too scared of getting Elise ganked and we're happy here. Boom. We get the plate. And now I proxy. Why do I proxy? Because I see a skirmish happening here, even though I'm weak side. I have so I have all my cooldowns, I have my summoners, everything. I know Elise is Herald, she's looking for a Herald play. In my mind, the odds of Elise being bot side right here to me were larger than her being top side. I think it's also completely grief for Elise being top side, considering she has just cleared her top side camps. If you look at the map, I don't even know why this Elise is top. Like, look, she has just cleared her top side camp. What is she actually doing? Look, if you're Elise right here, three camps up, nothing up. Right? So in my mind, in the game, even though I know, I, even if I didn't know exactly where Elise is at, what is she actually doing? Look at this guy. Look at this. Right? So remember, when I was in game here, what I was thinking about is, I'm gonna proxy here, and I said, even if Elise comes, I can escape here, because I'm driven, I have so many dashes, right? So here, I'm gonna go proxy, I'm wasting this guy's time immensely, even though I didn't notice exactly in game, I knew there was an ult, so right here, I'm hyper-focused, and I'm saying, if there's an Elise, I will insta-flush. And boom, I insta flush, right? I, it wasn't even close to reaching me. I just insta flushed. And now I know all I need to do is just live. Because enemy bot has just died. Elise is wasting all her tempo in top. She has Herald. She's not doing anything. They're literally losing out on resources. And sure, I may have lost my summoners. But who cares? Because Elise lost her tempo taking these camps. Enemy bot lane died. And it allowed lost the full wave. So I'm still expending my lead. And they are getting nothing. They're getting absolutely nothing. So if I'm in enemy shoes, I'd be extremely frustrated here. Boom. Already 2k gold lead. Let's continue. I recall now because I have enough gold for CDR boots. I don't have old, I don't have summoners, so it's better to just recall. And now I'm back on the map again. Beautiful. So, what do we do? I see that this is up. Uh, sadly, my bot lane died. I mean, that is just completely grief by them. They should never die here because now Elise actually gets the time to do a Herald, but it's okay. So, what, what do you do here in my shoes, guys? What is my play here? I'm going to just hard push. Why do I hard push? I don't have ult, I don't have summoners. But Elise is bot, so I can just do whatever I want. And look, she's kind of weak right now, right? So I literally just hard push this wave, and what do we do, chat? We could go for jungle camps. Instead, I look to go proxy here. Because I can get plates, I can get stuff like this. So here I go proxy. I know this camp is respawning. Beautiful. So proxy, lovely. Now, this is what I mean. What can you do as a Lawi? What can you do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All she can do is just collect this wave. I have already collected this wave. The next wave that I'm supposed to catch hasn't even spawned yet. And I don't need to catch next wave here. I can catch next wave here or even under my turret, right? So I have a tempo timer of like one minute right now. So I use that to roam it, right? Akali's here. She gets stopped. Do I chase her, chat? Should I chase her? Should I chase Akali? No, never. But why? Why should I not chase Akali? Can you guys explain me why I should not chase Akali? Because you're going top anyways. So this is a key concept to understand, okay? I wanted to show this frame to you guys so you can all let your thoughts go onto this frame and now I explain my frame. So what I'm thinking about here is I don't even care about this wave that much. What I care about mostly is right now I have massive tempo over Akali. Why do I have tempo? Look at her items. I'm checking her items. She's probably sitting at like 1k gold. I haven't checked. 1k gold. How do I know? Just because at this point in the game, she hasn't recalled for a while, so I'm assuming she's around 1k gold. I didn't check this. This is pure instinct right now. Now, what does Akali have to do after getting ganked by Alistar here? She has to recall. So while she has to recall, right, that takes, so she has to walk away from the Alistar. That takes a few seconds. Then she has to take 8 seconds to recall. And then she has to spend 15 seconds or 20 seconds walking back into mid. In total, that is around 40 seconds of tempo that I have over the Elawi right now. Or over the Akali. On top of that, 
I don't need to be top wave right now because I pushed out the wave. So what I want to do here is actually utilize this next spawning mid wave because Akali has to recall anyways. And while she's recalling, I ping my mid laner to go top. Why? Because I've tempo into mid and I utilize that tempo right now to gain extra plates for myself. So I don't need the skill. I need to get the tempo and with the tempo, boom, they lose a full mid wave and I get two plates. So now when we press X, we are 50 CS up, 60 CS up and now we're almost 3k gold up. I didn't kill the Alawi. I didn't look for kills. But again, what is Alawi getting, chat? She is only getting the top waves. Nothing else. She is only taking top waves. There's nothing else Alawi can do. She's just waiting at top, standing here like this. She's like, oh, next wave. Oh, okay, I get the next wave. Meanwhile, me, boom, proxy, take the wave. Boom, proxy, take John camps. Boom, proxy, take plates. There's nothing they can do about it when I utilize my tempo like this, right? She, all she can do is just stand here. And now when I'm done with this chat, what do I do? I see this guy died. I'm looking at the timer in the game. 13, 20, I'm like, okay, plates are gonna drop soon. Now I ping on the way, I ping my team away. Why? Because I have tempo again. Akali is mid, Elawi is dead. Guess what, chat? I can take this full turret. So now we take this full turret as well. Look at the gold. Right? Now we're more than 3k gold up. How can Alawi play now? How can she play now? And I knew all of this would pretty much play out once I get my Hydra right here, right? So here, we're 1.5k gold up. I did not get a single kill, right? So look, 1.5k gold up, 10 minutes into the game. 1.5k gold up. 40 minutes into the game, I still didn't get a single kill. Well, let's go a bit further. Here in the game, I still didn't kill her once. I mean, she did die once. I didn't get a single kill, and boom, I'm 3k gold up. Take from that as you want, chat. But if you learn to utilize tempo well, you will become a monster. 0-7 bot lane, top lane lead, fun males, meet Lady Mackerel, GG!